Hi, Vintage Stereo Buff here. Today I'm going to do an amp test on a new school amp. I got this from eBay. I think it's $135 new from what I saw on eBay. I got this one refurbished for $39.99 and it was so cheap I thought I might as well get it and see how it works. I don't have any anything but old school amps and I wanted to try something new. It looks fairly well built. It's nice and solid and heavy. It has line outputs too to go to another amp. A switch here for mono or stereo input and a little plug for a bass knob. And on this end we have pretty nice looking terminals. They look like pretty good quality and they're pretty big. I think you can get 8 gauge in the speaker terminals and uh, 4 gauge in this, maybe bigger. It has strange looking fuses I've never seen before. I don't like that because I don't know where to get replacements. And they're probably more expensive than regular fuses. There's two 30s, but this is the only one that actually is functional. This is actually a spare fuse in a spare fuse holder. Now I'll turn it over and let you look at the innards of it. Everybody likes amp guts. At least I do. And as to be expected, it only has a 30 amp fuse. So I'd put the power output at about 300 watts. It's rated at 596 watts into 4 ohms bridged. Or 2 times 298 into 4 ohms or to 2 ohms <clears throat> and 2 times 160 into 4 ohms I know it won't do that much power with the fusing it has in it and as you can see here we got quite a bit of real estate in here you could put this this many amp components in a much smaller chassis and as you can see we have four just four output transistors here two per side they look like pretty good size outputs though. And then we have three power supply transistors here and three on this side to operate this transformer here. And these two here, these are diodes here. These are used to rectify the alternating current coming off of here and convert it to DC to store in these caps. These caps look kind of small in this big board, but they're actually pretty decent size. These are 4700 microfarad, 35 volt caps. That's pretty good size for the power output of this amp. And uh, they're, they're not, probably not that good a quality of caps. It says Chang on the bottom of them. I doubt if they're good quality like the like a Rubicon a Rubicon cap or a Nichicon cap. I imagine most of the components are fairly cheap and even if the amp performs well I doubt if it has a it's probably not going to last 25 years like my like my old school amps. But, you get what you pay for. And we'll turn it over. And I'll run a dynamic test. Well, first... First I'll do a continuous 40 hertz sine wave. Do one of those first. Turn my meter on. I'm going to run my power up on my battery charger, plug it in, and get my power up a little higher. And uh, Okay, well, first we'll do, first we'll do the dynamic power measurement. Okay. 
Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. The voltage is not going up. Okay, now we're getting it moved up. Okay, voltage is up. Flip the power on. Set it on dyno mode. Okay, here we go. Now, watts at 7.2 188 watts at 7.2 which would translate to 338 watts dynamic power into 4 ohms now I'll run a continuous test I got it reset okay Power on. One hundred and forty-eight watts and seven point eight ohms. And that would calculate out to 288 watts continuous into 4 ohms. I'm going to reset it and try to run that again and see if I can get a little better. Okay, we'll do it again. Hundred and fifty one at seven point nine. Calculates out to two hundred and ninety eight watts into four ohms continuous. Well, that's with pretty good input voltage, so it may not do quite that much if. On 14 and a half volts in a car it may not be quite that much my input voltage is either too high or if I leave the charger off uh, then the voltage goes down too much to get a good reading but anyway there you have it I guess what we could do is let it come voltage come back down and run this test again on uh, Let's try it again on 13.7 volts and see what we get. Okay, let's try it again and you'll get a better idea. Okay. Well, you did 146. 146 at 
So that will be 288 with the 13 and the 13.4 volts input. So that's not much less. That's still pretty good output. And so now we'll reset it and do another dynamic. One sixty four at six point nine. So that would come to two hundred eighty two, two hundred eighty two watts into four ohms dynamic power at a thirteen point four volt input. So, it's about like I expected. The amp puts out about 300 watts RMS into 4 ohms. Uh, about half of what the manufacturer claims it will do. It seems like that's commonplace now to rate an amp double at what it actually puts out. Uh, for $135 for this amp, I'd have no problem paying $135 for an amp that'll put out 300 watts into 4 ohms. I don't have any problem with the way the amp's built, or the power output, or the price. I do have a problem with the way they market the amp, and the way they inflate the power numbers. It doesn't make sense to me. But, anyway, for now, vintage stereo buff out.